Hey guys, welcome back to 5 Minutes with the Technician. My name is Daniel. So today, I want to talk about how you can start engraving with your Sasso K600. Okay, so let's dive in here. All right, guys, welcome back. So what we're going to start out with is talking about where you can find a lot of um, really nice DXF files for signs and stuff like that. So this website, threeaxis.co, has a lot of really nice signs that are totally free in here. I already found one, downloaded it, and we're going to play around with it here in a second. So if you just Google like DXF free signs, like you'll come up with like a lot of like good hits. Um, so there's that. Now let's talk about tooling. So the tooling that we're going to be using in this video is a PCD engraving bit. Okay, so PCD engraving bit. Um, so you can get these engraving bits. This is on Grand Quartz's website, but you can get these from most tooling manufacturers. I know uh, Helix carries them, so you can contact any of the guys at Helix and they'll get you one of these. So you need the engraving bit, and you also need the, uh, I think it's like a collar. It's like, or call it, or something like that. But um, like, this is just a rod. You need the piece that clamps onto it so you can actually mount it onto the machine. So contact Helix, because I know they've hooked us up with these before. Uh, okay, so let's go to AlphaCam and let's work on this. So first thing we're going to want to do here, I've got a blank AlphaCam. So first thing we're going to want to do is set up this tool. So in your command search, go to command search and type in define. Okay. And I might have spelt it wrong, but my computer's also like pretty slow. Let's see, this is the Sasso free laptop. My work laptop and it's it struggles but we get there eventually we get there define tool okay so type in define tool click on that okay so in here you have different tool types that you can set up so for this one we're actually just going to use flat end which is the same thing as what your finger bit is so you could also edit your old finger bit um but i wanted to show you this in case you get something like a ball end okay which is like you know round at the bottom which works really well for making like drain boards and stuff like that and that might i might make a different video on drain boards here we'll see i don't know how much time i'll have today but uh let's go to flat end okay now i know our pcd engraving bit is not flat but this works perfect so let's come in here so i want to show you this here so tool number set that to two offset number is two our length, so you would actually put that on the machine and then go and measure it off of either your air cylinder or off of the table. If you don't know how to do that, watch my video on how to measure your tools on your K600. For the diameter, you would actually measure the diameter. I'm gonna guess and say it's maybe like a quarter inch. Okay, so this is the part that makes this worth it. This, this flat is we can put a taper on this. Okay, so if I select, special and then go to taper then i can set my taper angle to the degree so the amount of taper that i'd like so i'm going to put it at like 35 just because visually that looks that looks okay to me uh, but check with your tooling rep i'm sure they could tell you the angle that's on their their pcd engraver and diameter i'm going to set that to zero okay units inches spindle rotation counterclockwise okay for your depth of cut, let's go to, we'll just do 0 0.07. That's your max depth of cut, okay? So that's not the one we're actually gonna use, that's your max, okay? Maximum depth, let's say, honestly, you're probably never gonna go over like 0.3 or even a quarter inch, that would be like crazy. Uh, okay, so feeds and speeds, let's go to fixed spindle speed. 4,500 and fixed feed. Let's go to like 60 inches per minute and fix it down. We'll set that at like two or maybe even one inch per minute. It has to go pretty slow, uh, but let's set it at two and let's click okay. Okay, so now we're gonna add that in there. So give it a name. Uh, so I'm just gonna call it PCD engraving bit. 
clever, I know. <laughs> okay, click OK. There we go, we can get out of that screen. Okay, so we've got the tool set up. So now what we're going to do here is we're gonna go into our machining styles. Okay, let's set up a machining style for this tool. So in here, if this is your first time opening machining styles, it's probably gonna look like this. So we need to open up this folder. So double click on it, and it'll open up these folders here. You can click on all those and open those up as well. Okay, so the one I'm gonna recommend that you use is any of them with no lead. Okay, if you don't have 2CM or 3CM styles, uh, you can also make a copy of this auto finger bit style. But for me, I have this one, I'm gonna copy that style. So right click, go to copy style, and then rename. So I'm gonna do this project at an eighth of an inch deep with my engraving bit. Okay, there's a little arrow on the left bit, click that, and then go to edit operation. So right click and then go to edit operation. So now we're gonna change that tool. So go to change tool, we're gonna set it as our PCD engraving bit and left click and this window will pop up. Okay, there we go. So our safe rapid level, because it's going like two inches per minute down, I'm gonna change our safe rapid level to like one inch because two inches per minute down is like painful to watch. And if you go to one inch per minute, it's even more painful because it's like, brrr, it takes forever. So um, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so your final depth, this is where you're gonna set that, that point, that point, I think I'll go negative 0.125. So that's where you're gonna set that that eighth of an inch depth. Okay, so now we can set our number of cuts. This is your depth of cut per pass, okay? So the material you are cutting per pass. So let's say it's like a 30 second, something like that. Let's just call it uh, four cuts, okay? And make sure that bi-directional is turned on. Okay, so it's gonna go back and forth and it's not gonna like cut, raise up, cut, so let's leave that on. Now we can go to machining data. Change your stock to be left, set that to zero. And the rest of that should be good. Go ahead and click OK. Boom, so now that is saved. So let's go ahead and bring in uh, the sign that I wanna work on. So let's go to save and special tools, input CAD, and click OK. All right, so let's bring in my sign DXF, and boom, there it is. Okay, so what we're going to do here, so I have my ghost tools on. So with a PCD engraving bit, you really don't need to worry too much about your tool directions unless you're doing something really, really intricate where you need like a little bit of gap in between something. But um, for this, I'm not gonna get into that too much. Uh, I want to just kind of get this applied and then maybe we'll do like a, a sign or something or some lettering with like a, with like a regular finger bit, because then you will want to set some tool directions. But for this, I'm just going to leave it as is. Everything comes in as default center line. All right, so let's go ahead and get out of that. So first thing, I'm out in space right now. So let's go ahead and move this entire thing over to like zero, zero. So let's, let's just click somewhere off in space and bring it over to zero, zero. There we go. Okay, let's get a table in here. So let's go a 2CM table. And let's get us some edges on this thing. Boom, there we go. Okay. And I'm almost done. There we go. Okay, so now we're actually gonna apply that machining style to this project. So if you go back into your machining styles here, right click and go to apply style to select geometries. Go ahead and select everything there and then right click. Boom, there it is. Okay, so now we have that applied. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change it to construction. Okay, so we have tools applied to geometry, but when I hit cut parts, I don't want to apply anything to it. 
So I want it to be construction. So when I hit cut parts, nothing happens to it. So let's go to change. So go to draw and manipulate, go to change. From geometry to construction, go ahead and select everything there. And now to cut our edges out, now we can hit cut parts and select your blade, hit cut parts. Boom, there we go. Okay, check your operations. So we got the engraving bit first, then the saw blades coming in. Let's go to our solid simulation. And let it go. Pretty badass, really. All right. You get the gist of that. So if you're wondering how long this is going to take, let's find out. Let's do a little time study here because I think you'll be surprised. It actually doesn't take as long as you would think. So if you go to your command search, and type in time study. For me, I'm just gonna type in time. I'm gonna freeze up the computer a little bit. There we go, time study, boom. So units, inches, efficiency rate, let's say 70%, let's be realistic. That is the percent on the dial. So boom, there we go. Total time, you're looking at about two hours for that. Um, yeah, I could see that, honestly. Um, kind of one of the biggest issues with doing some of these little projects is the variance in your thickness of stone. So we do an eighth of an inch, because if you try to do just like a little bit, if that slab is like, you know, different from one end to the other, you might like go super deep over here and like you might not touch over there. So try to set a depth where you're gonna hit all areas. Uh, and if it's really, really bad, like either one, use a different piece or two, you might honestly have to like mill the backside of the stone down to get it flat. Um, you have to do something because uh, there's really nothing that we can really, really do in alpha cam to make it like, you know, work with what you're trying to do. Like we set a plane and tell it to go a certain area. So, so that's that one. If you were done with that project, you'd output NC, send it out and cut it. Let's do another one, but let's do some lettering. Okay, so let's let's get rid of this. I'm just gonna start a new, oh, I wanna start a new alpha cam window, get rid of that. Okay, boom, insert the table. And let's draw one of these. Okay, so we've got our little piece in there. Now for lettering, okay, so for lettering, you're gonna go to A, B. So A, B at the top, it just says text, or you could hit Control T on your keyboard. Okay, so if we're still using the PCD engraving bit, you could do a lot of different things with it. I mean, you could do like all of these are totally fine. You see how that it shows you a little thing here. With the PCD engraving bit, that's fine because you're gonna go center line and call, cut all this out. If you're trying to do some of this with a finger bit, um, it gets a little bit more difficult because it just, you know, the bit's just too wide, really. But uh, for now, I want to show you one with the PCD engraving bit because it's pretty easy. So in here for type, set it to geometry and then pick your, pick your lettering and uh, set your height of your characters and then click OK. Boom, let's go five. And I'll do a separate line. And there we go. OK. Same deal with lettering. So if you're using the PCD engraving bit, 
you don't really, really need to like stress too much about setting your tool directions. When you start getting to bits that are a lot larger, and I'll show you some examples here, then you're going to have to like try to set tool directions to make it work. But for this, like this would be just fine, just like that. Boom, there it is. That PCD engraving bit, you can just do little intricate things and be totally fine. So you can see like the gaps, everything looks good. There's like nothing like overlapping. Let's do it with, let me show you just for an example of how it's gonna look if we used a regular finger bit. So let me edit this one, edit. So I mean, like, it just looks, it looks terrible. I mean, like, not a lot you can really do uh, with the regular finger bit unless you do really large letters. So like I did four inch letters, but if we did something with like maybe eight inch letters or 10 inch letters. I thought I, let's go delete. Boom, let's do like a 10 inch letter, which is a pretty, it's a pretty hefty letter. All right, let's apply our machining style to that. And let's see how that looks. Looks a little bit better. Uh, honestly, if you're going, if you like absolutely want to use the regular finger bit for engraving or something like that, what you're actually going to, the style that you're going to want to use, like the text style, if you click on text, come in here, go to the top. There's one called stencil that works pretty well. It's just straight lines. So then you can just, you know, do that. Boom. And then uh, apply that style. That's going to look a little bit better. You know, you could do that stuff. Um, but in all reality, proper tooling, you typically can get better results or more refined results. Um, but if you just wanted to like do something real quick, you could totally use your, your finger bit. Just try to use stencil. I think that is like the most effective. Uh, or get yourself the little micro bit that's only like a quarter inch rather than like three quarters of an inch. And you could do more intricate things. So that kind of wraps up, um, that kind of wraps up engraving, really. There's not like too terribly much there. Um, but if you've never played around with machining styles, it can be pretty daunting for sure. Um, one other thing I was going to talk to you about, let's go back here was setting tool directions. So you see all these arrows, these ghost tools. If you needed to set tool directions, uh, you can do that. So like if, well, we don't have any great examples. Usually it's like, like this E for example, we don't wanna be like on the center of that line. Maybe we wanna be on the outside of this inner line and on the inside of this line. So like now, let me show you how this is gonna look. Uh, boop, boop, boop. So I'm going to show you how this one looks. See how it's all internal of that. See that E is basically a stencil at that point. And it's not really, you know, like this one actually didn't look too terrible, but this is a 10 inch letter too. But if you needed to shift around your tool directions, you could do that up here. But, uh, to me, at, at a 10 inch letter, it, it seemed fine. But uh, if you needed to, there's there it is. So anyways, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you would like a video on anything in particular, please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to make them. This video was made for Angelo. Um, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good day.